Welcome to This Is Important, a production of iHeartRadio, the show where we talk about what's obviously most critically, crucially important. Today on This Is Important. No, I wouldn't lay it down and then get on top of it and surf it. Sweetheart, I burn toast. Fuck you! We're talking here! Fuck you! It's like, I got a buddy. Coolest guy you ever met. Got himself a ninja. Strap in. That was pretty good. Best yet. Wow, that's like... That was really good. That was really that was, good stuff. That was Professional one of our best. schnit right there. That was one of our Do best. Get a snack? Durs, you got a snack? Durs is real worried about his, his snacks. I mean, I got some wrap snacks. <laughs> I, dude, you got wrap snacks? I got wrap snacks at 7-Eleven. Oh, are you kidding me? What do you got? Who who you get? You get uh, some uh, boozy chips, some little boozy. Yeah, that Louisiana. No, notorious B.I.G. Hang on, let me grab it. Oh yeah, talk about. I believe. Your... What's the notorious B.I.G. snack? Mac macaroni and cheese. Is that what it is? Who's getting the money? Who's getting the money for for when they're kaput? They're a state. Uh, they're a state. Yeah, that's probably myth. Yeah, the, the estate gets all their dough. Mrs. Christopher Wallace. Is that how that works? Guys, I'm back. Yeah. Uh, we got Notorious B.I.G. Cookout Barbecue Sauce Potato Chips. Mm. Oh, mm. wow. Those mm. look so mm. yummy. And that's, the, and that's the icon. Those, now, those aren't series. wrap snacks. Those are wrap icon <laughs> chips. chips. I believe this uh, is a different what, brand. No, it's, it says no. wrap snacks right on it, bud. Oh, does it? Underneath? Yeah. Okay, so it's the Icon Edition. Yeah. You just have to use... Uh, I think this is the second wave of, of Rap Snacks chips. Because there was a first generation. Yeah. But, you know, those rappers have kind of... Like, nobody wants to eat Mac 10 chips anymore. <laughs> they're, they're off the Mac. Hey, speak for yourself, man. Why not? Well, That's I true. I, I mean, I'm a big West Side Connection fan. Wow. I, I, I would love yeah, to dude. dig in. But the kids, they want Cardi B. Sour cream. I want some WAP snacks. <laughs> I remember seeing Migos on some WAP snacks on the website. Yeah. They want some wasabi WAP. I want some WAP snacks. <laughs> wasabi WAP is fucking Slippery good. and wet. Dude. I like that. Some real. What's so spicy? Uh, I got a Slurpee. No. I got a Slurpee when I was there. Oh, oh dude, treat you yourself, do. dude. What flavor? So good. Do you remember back in the day when, um, yeah. when the, we, there was the 7-Eleven down the street from our house and we would take fun little walkabouts and the four of us would get together and take a fun little walkabout <laughs> and walk down to <laughs> the 7-Eleven and get ourselves some uh, energy Slurpees? Do you yeah, remember those? Absolutely. I Where remember. What guys 7-Eleven? I remember your AM, nope. PM. The 7-Eleven was at the Packard house down on like Packard and Hauser. Yeah, it was the Packard. Copy that. I used to save up quarters just to snap on a big gulp. Me, oh. Kyle, and Blake used to live at this house that directly across the street, there was this cool dude named G-Money who uh, who was just a, the fucking best. He was dope. He ran a car wash out of his garage. He did run a car wash. I kind of think... Great work. Honestly, great work. I had the Ford Focus wash there multiple times. You did it multiple times? Oh, yeah, yeah dude. So twice. How much did that cost? That was when I treated myself to that kind of stuff. You don't do that anymore? No, I, no, I don't. <laughs> no, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't? Now you, now you have five cars and you don't treat yourself to that. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's my Saturday morning, washing them. Yeah, uh, nice. Uh, yeah. No, G, he was, he was uh, relatively... Like priced well, I think he gave me a neighbor discount. It was like twenty bucks, something like that. You know what else was priced pretty damn well, which was no vacuum though, no vacuum. Yeah, he doesn't get inside oh. unless it's to to put a brick of cocaine in there for you. Hello, that was the special. That was the special. Huh. Oh, I what never about, even thought about that. <laughs> do you remember right around the corner at, at that place we used to eat called Lucy's? Where yes. Get like a, it was like a Mexican restaurant, but we get cheeseburgers there for like three bucks. So I think there's a bunch of Lucy's. Good they call. all they all have like numbers, like Lucy's number 21, 22, something like that. Is that right? Or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a handful of Lucy's out there. I just remember they gave me 
And that's it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he teed it up. Yeah, that they gave wild. me <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. That that neighborhood was cool. I saw my first dead body in that neighborhood. I saw it um, in the Domino's parking lot. Mm. Right there. Right there off of Pico. Huh. Like, was a, it was a dead person or a murdered Murdered person, or I don't know what it was exactly, but it was a body, and they were in the process of covering up with a sheet. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's always spooky. When I drove past, and then I stopped and I got out of my car and stared for a little bit because um, I'm a rubbernecker. Ooh. Yeah, well, yeah. you're a stop and pull over and go I'm peek a... under the <laughs> fucking sheet guy. <laughs> I was like, let me see the body. The dude <laughs> likes to help, man. The guy is neighborhood watch over here. We love it. I am, dude. Yeah. Sorry, Jersey, move over. There's a new neighborhood watch in town. That's fine. I remember that was the inspiration for uh, the character trait that my character took. <laughs> the character <laughs> I of... I appreciate <laughs> it. Wow. Holmvik. Beautiful. Yeah, that neighborhood rocked, man. The Seven Eleven was right there. Yeah, that ruled. G Money had a he had a, a like a necklace, if I remember right, with a G on it, with like the the slashes to make it look like it was a money symbol. Yeah, that's hard. Like a G with two, two vertical lines going through with, it. With two vertical lines going yeah. down through it, which that's tight. It's and hard. he goes by G Money. It was right. pretty. It was pretty cool. And he would always watch us. We would film our. Hilarious comedy videos, MillerComedy.com, and we would uh, film the videos. And then when we went to move, it was an awesome thing where he came up to us and he was like, "Yo, y'all moving?" And we're like, "Yeah, man. Uh, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna move to the valley, get a bigger place." And he goes, "Y'all, so uh, good luck with your videos." And we're like, "Oh, thanks." And he goes, "I guess I'll be seeing y'all on Broadway." Yep. Yeah, yep. <laughs> because he, because he for sure but, thought we were musical theater students because we yeah. were always in costume and yeah. singing we songs, the song and <laughs> dance men. But, but that's also that's also why Blake said I thought it was Broadway or bust in that yeah. song that we played. That's true. That was a reference to G Money. I thought it was Broadway. I thought it was. <laughs> and Adam, what happened when you went back driving uh, through the neighborhood and saw him like uh, several years oh. later? Yeah, that that was probably only like maybe two years ago, and I drove past, and he, I was like, "G money," and he looked at me like he was about to fucking murder me. <laughs> just had no recollection, <laughs> zero recollection on his face. It was just no. like, "How do you know me? Keep it moving, motherfucker." Yeah. Yeah. It was it was not proper. He was still washing cars though. I'm like, he had he must have a good business. Remember yeah. the type of cars that would roll through too? There would be like. Hella nice. There, yeah, there'd be like uh, Rolls Royce Phantoms and shit, like really nice cars. Yeah, yeah, awesome motorcycles too. I mean, G Money name you can trust. Yeah, you can yeah. trust. Come on. Yeah, G yeah. Money. He's G Money. <laughs> I'm telling you, he did a great job. Watch the focus right up, man. Didn't you, Blake? Didn't you get like you got your stuff stolen and he like got it back for you or something? Yeah, that's right. I I had like. You know, uh, a Ford Escape, but I had a nice sound system in it. I had a right. big old like you have speaker. To. Yeah, we had a big trunk rattler in the in the back. By the way, that Ford the, Escape that wasn't like an old. You weren't that wasn't like a beater. That was a pretty nice newer Ford Escape. New car, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like the engine was not big or anything, but the, the it sounded good. Kyle always taught yeah. me that. Hey, you could you could escape. You gotta have the thumps in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> It didn't. It it doesn't matter how your car runs if you no. got a good system. If the you system is dumb. right, the car. I think is. that's all. Yes. I also think that's just our generation. I don't think like twenty year old kids are soupy just because car stereo speakers are just pretty good now. Yes, they've come a long way. Like yeah. our, it used to yeah. truly suck when we were kids. Uh, when we were kids, they like this. Yeah. The cassette player would skip. <laughs> <laughs> they like truly sucked. So you had to put in your two 15 inch sub wafers in the back. Yeah, you had to womp womp. I definitely went through the phase of like just loading up the trunk with like 12s oh, yeah. and 14s and stuff and just connecting as much as possible. But I did find that the music sounded so good with just two eights. 
There you go, two eights. Sure. Two eights. Uh, I'm a stock. I'm a stock guy myself. Uh, I, I appreciate the effort that they put in at, at General Motors. That's Stockholm since. <laughs> Wait. So you had a woofer in your trunk, and then yeah, yeah, I had it. I had it in the back of the trunk, and uh, yeah, one one day it came out, and the back window was broke out, and it was like, oh man, somebody stole my shit. That's not exactly right. I thought, didn't you guys like hear it happening and then you got your like katana out and- Oh. Oh my God, I kind of remember that. It was like in the morning. And don't skip over like the big, the meat of the story. I, it's, well, to be fair, Adam, I have completely blocked this out because it was very scary and sad for I me. Yeah, should we start over? <laughs> well, what happened was it was happening right it, right after it was oh. it was happening right outside my window and I'm such a heavy sleeper that I didn't wake up for any of this. And then the next morning you guys were like, "Well, Jesus, I can't believe you slept through all that." And I'm like, "Why? What happened?" <laughs> and you're like, "I almost murdered someone with a katana sword last <laughs> night." And I'm like, "What?" Uh -huh. With my with my decorative katana blade. <laughs> <laughs> full yeah, full disclosure. I almost murdered someone with a katana blade. Means I pulled it off the wall and watched him steal yeah. myself. <laughs> that blade was unsharpened didn't, for sure. Didn't even open the door and, and like give like a get out of here like a deep voice. Get out of here. No, it was more like a who who who. <laughs> oh, so yeah. He, was like, he thinks there's like a cowardly dog uh, in, in <laughs> locked right. inside the house. Blake, is that when the dude like picked up the piece of tan bark and pretended he was on the phone? Like, is that the same? Yes, man. Well, he was a total tweaker, but that's right. why. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, like, yeah, he pretended he was like talking on a piece of tan bark, and because he came back because <laughs> he couldn't get the speaker through the window. It was too right. big. It was yeah. too, you had to open it. Yeah, there was too much bass in there, baby. Yeah, yeah. The douche. So then he walked away and pretended he was on the phone while talking to a piece of tan bark and then like, which is just wood, and then <laughs> walked back and paced back and forth. And he used to make it a quick call. Yeah. How does he do this? Yeah, so basically we, you know, we're like, went across the street like, Mr. G Money, sir, will you help us? He's like, oh, <laughs> I'll take care of this. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> but did he get, Did was stuff stolen? This is the worst. This has the potential to be the greatest story in our podcast history. I know. I'm I'm set I'm setting up the story and Blake just oh. keeps bulldozing right past all the I don't remember anything. I'm I don't want to talk about it. Can we change the subject? <laughs> I mean, you're like, and now you don't we're want to here, talk about something that happened 15 solid 15 wait, years ago. Adam, they, what's your version of the story? Because I truly but, but, don't remember this. Because Blake was just like, yeah, we, he couldn't get it out. So then he was talking on tan bark. Yeah, man. And then he's like, anyways. And uh, then I talked to G Money, and he said he'll get it back. I'm like, so wait, did someone actually steal something? No, nothing was taken, but my window was broken. So then, what is G Money talking about? <laughs> he just said he just set the bro straight. G Money must have been the guy that came out, right? He must have been like, stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hang the fuck on. This is so bad. <laughs> he stole the, something was stolen from your car. No, he broke a window. No, he couldn't get it out. He broke a window and. Oh. Well, what what was it then? Then when someone stole something from us, and G Money came and he's like, uh, "Yo, I'll get it back for you, not in my neighborhood." And then he went and no, that was all, you're getting some stories. That was and he got it back. No, this is not the same story. This is the story when we were playing wee bowling mm -hmm. and having some cocktails and smoking resin balls, the good old days. Mm. And with a fucking knock, 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 knock. And we were like, who the fuck is coming over? And it was the lady who came into our house. And we were like, what happened? And she was like, I just got, I just got robbed. They took my laptop at gunpoint. At sawed off, sawed off shotgun point. Right. Yeah. And we were fucking high out of our minds playing we bowling and we golf. And we were like, <laughs> get in here, come in here, have a beer, like just chill out. What's up? And we just kind of locked the door and like watched. And that's probably when we pulled the katana off the fucking wall. And we're serious, like, because we were like, we're going to protect you. We are very, we're warriors. We will protect you. It's a good thing you guys had that sword. Uh, yeah, it was everything. It seems like it came in handy a bunch. <laughs> yeah. And then the, then the next, like after that, she left, she went back to her car. She And then I think somehow G Money figured out about it. And he was like, not in my neighborhood. If I find the motherfucker who did this, I'm gonna bury him. 
And it was like, whoa. Allegedly. And then a sawed off shotgun <laughs> fell out of his pants. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And then he was cleaning a sawed off shotgun. Allegedly. Uh, Allegedly. I also clean guns. This is Allegedly. A car. <laughs> Allegedly, he was doing that. Those were the good old days. Uh, yeah, fucking. That's, that's good, though. You want that dude in the neighborhood to be like, hell yeah. I'm watching. Yeah, that neighborhood. Yeah, I, I remember the one time that I made him mad because we got drunk one night and like Adam had an old pair of like Air Force Ones and we're like, dude, it would be hella funny if we just throw them up on the on the like telephone wires and hang them there. And so then, funny, dude. <laughs> yeah, funniest joke. Because <laughs> I think we saw what a it hilarious in, joke. We you saw it in a Nelly it. video or something. And then uh, <laughs> the next morning we came out and they were down and G Money basically was like, don't do that again. It's not, it doesn't mean what you think it means. So don't do it. And we're like, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> it means old shoes, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what you do with Stinky the old ones. Stinky old shoes. <laughs> I still don't know what that means exactly. What is that? I don't either. No, I, did, I dare not ask. I thought it meant somebody got killed there and you take their shoes off and you chuck them up on the, on the wires. See, and now we know. I thought maybe Shit. it mar marked like a trap house or something. Thank you, Dursey. You're the G money of our crew, Durs. Hey, let me tell you, on the on the country club golf course when I was growing up, there were just a few shoes in the trees. So, uh, <laughs> definitely not something to joke about. I apologize. To, I apologize for that. You're doing just. Let's hold off on the take backs and apologies. Well, you got to save that apology. You can't be dropping that apology this quickly. That's okay. you got to save that for the end, my man. I apologize for apologizing early. <laughs> Sorry, I'd like, like to well, deliver. Just fucked up again. An early, early apology. apology. Well, I'm going to have more, so just don't worry. I'm sorry for damn near everything I do. You're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate my life. I feel that like was I... a gnarly neighborhood, though. Do you remember when we were looking for... When we signed the lease for that house, after we signed the lease and we were moving everything in, uh, a police officer pulled up and was like, are you guys moving in here? And we're like... Yep, moving in all our stuff. Yes, sir. We're moving to Hollywood. Yes, sir. We sh we sh we certainly are. <laughs> we're moving to Hollywood, baby. And they're like, "Well, you're about eight miles south of Hollywood, but uh, well, it was just a few blocks south of where we were living up in yes. Miracle Mile, and we were like saving five hundred bucks or four hundred bucks or something like that. And we're yeah, like, let's we're do it. Like, we don't got any money. Like, this is totally worth it." Um, and then turns out we moved into the hood. We didn't realize we were that close. And the cop was like, uh, break your lease and move right now. Break your lease. Yeah. Get out of here. And we're like, but we just signed. We gave the deposit. And they were like, you guys should not be living here. And then I, I remember right after we signed the lease, I go, well, why is it seems like there's a lot of old homes in this neighborhood, but our house is like a brand new, brand new house. It was a like a prefab brand new house. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, why is that? And they're like, well, it was, uh, the house that was here before was burnt down. And oh, we're like- Exploded. Huh. Mm. No, I think it was burnt down in the riots and it was just like a what? smoldering trash heap for oh. like a solid like 15 years. And oh, then wow. we moved in. Not like a somebody <laughs> bathtub explosion? No, I don't think so. I That'd think it was sick. like a- It was dope. It was dope though. And now that neighborhood, that neighborhood is now like, like hot. Oh yeah, sizzling they, hot. It was fully. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gentrified. Yeah, yeah. That place was cool. That's on a lot. That's that's the backdrop for a lot. That's the backdrop for our startup for sure. <laughs> like all the sketches. One more time. That's the backdrop. That's the backdrop for our startup for all of our like early sketches. Like yeah. we're shot in that house. Is there like it a plaque outside there? There should be. We should go put one. Dude, I just every time yeah. you drove up the driveway, you'd scrape the shit out of your car, like no yes. matter what you were driving. It was so annoying too because you couldn't, you couldn't. It was just a single driveway, so there was four of us living there, and yeah, tandem, tandem parking's the worst and, when you have roommates. Yeah, and so it was just all. If you luckily, I never had a job where I had to leave in the morning. It was a lot of you guys having to be like, Adam, just give me your keys. <laughs> Blake, do you remember when you were like, uh, when you're like, okay, I got to go to work at BJ's and mm -hmm. I had to back my car out and I was going slow because it was a blind driveway and you just kind of went at whatever speed you felt like it and just hit my car straight yeah, up. <laughs> backed right into you. Well, I was nervous. I thought I was going to be late to work and you know me. I'm a number one worker. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, totally. Uh, we were all just going to say that. Exactly. Yeah, well, that was <laughs> tip of the tongue, top of oh, the teeth. Oh, you did have your hair all tucked in at that point because yes. you were <laughs> supposed to get a haircut at BJ's, but you refused to get a haircut. But BJ's had a rule. BJ's had a rule which was extremely sexist that men... Its hair couldn't touch their shoulders, and they couldn't have like ponytails either. Men couldn't have sexy, flowing, long, yeah. luscious locks. Wait, That's but if you're BS. if you're a woman, you can let it rock. You could just let yep. it. You could have a ponytail. It didn't have to be back in a pone. You could have a ponytail, but men couldn't. Now, was there any sort of rule against how Whoa. long your pubic hair could be? Uh, I think like it got to a point where I was spoken to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you shaved it's, it's it. Hanging you it's hanging you. off the bottom of your shorts. <laughs> yeah. They're like, okay. Number one worker. And so what was, your, solu what was your solution? Because, Blake, you uh, had just grown your hair down to your shoulders. If I, uh... I wasn't quite ready to cut my hair because, it, you know, I was starting to book those uh, Starbucks hands commercials. And uh, so <laughs> I decided every shift to wake up about an hour, a half hour early and uh, bobby pin it up. So it kind of looked like I was rocking like a... But not up. No, fold it in. And un yeah. <laughs> under. He folded it underneath. So you it looked, looked like absolutely a big mushroom. Insane. I looked like James Madison, <laughs> uh, the president. Yeah, yeah, you do look like a like it was a powdered wig. Uh, we need to... That has to... You, we have to post that on, on the... Uh, I'll try to look for those pictures. Pod important... Instagram. You did it. Uh, you did it in an episode, no? Right? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, did, I can't the, remember. Oh which man, one. how humiliating! And did like, it, I was delivering was, so to like was, sororities that, and stuff. I felt like a damn <laughs> fool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was geez. the dude who backed into me full bore and just poked his head out of the car. I was like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, I was shook, man. I was like, shook. you're uh, you're the worst driver ever, right? Me. Yeah, no, you're I, bad, I, right? I have a good record. I have an excellent driving record. But like, if you're ever like, hey, we're leaving from the same place, I'll meet you at this other place in 10 minutes because it takes 10 minutes to get there, <laughs> you'll be there in 25 minutes, my correct? My sense yeah. of direction and how fast I drive, yes, I'm cautious and I never know where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so, okay. yeah. It's the second part. I'd say <laughs> Blake he drives like a, like a elderly woman. Yeah. Like right. a little old lady who... I'm not a pedal to the metal guy. No, 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 no. But you're also like, I feel like I've seen you just be like, I can imagine you just going past your exit and being like, that was that was the exit. I'm oh, yeah, that happens keep a lot. Going. Uh, and, whoop, that was another well, exit. Well, you'd think it wouldn't happen because you go so goddamn slow. You'd think yeah. you'd, see, it would, you'd see it coming. And you're so cautious. Yeah, if you're cautious, you're yeah. like, what was that sign? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's happened multiple times when we, you know, we're going to shoot at a location or something, and we're like, oh, we're just all going to drive ourselves. Uh, it'll take 10 minutes to get there, and we'll just sort of follow each other and get there. And then all of a sudden, you just see Blake just turn. <laughs> Just take a turn, and you're like, well, none of us are taking that turn. I'm taking the safer route. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't get on, don't get on the freeway. My GPS says there's a yeah there's a pothole. What is that? Yeah. How did you get by while you were delivery driving? Like, how did you? That's my concern, guys. This was the time of right. map quest. Well, okay. The pizza. I know, but the pizza never got there on time, did it? Mm, I mean, I got tips. The mm. tips don't lie. And uh, are you a double, like, are you... Well, tips are mandatory. Do you have the the guts to double park and run up in? Or were you like, ah, I don't want to do that. I'm just gonna I will say when I was delivering pizzas, I, I lost, like, the safety side of me. I would pull some maneuvers. It was a very frustrating job. It drove me insane. For sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not an easy job. So so I, I guess I didn't, I didn't remember uh, how, what a bad... <laughs> driver you were uh-huh not a bad driver slow not a bad driver no not bad just uh overly well pretty bad if just shouldn't shouldn't be driving pretty mm. bad if you're trying to get from a to b at a timely matter like bad if you're yes bad at getting somewhere and with any sort of uh time on any sort of timely fashion any okay. kind of clock or direction i mean blake <laughs> just came and visited me uh, in orange county and drove to the wrong city that's true. Really? So, yes. Went to a completely different beach town that I don't live in. That's true. Which beach town did you end up going to? He went to Hunting Huntington Beach. Yes. 
because uh-huh. I don't. Which, I, is that how we're saying it now? We say Huntington? Because, look, I don't want to. Hunti- Huntington? Huntington? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't text. know. I live, I live down I the just want to know what it's called. If you want to know what my thinking was behind that, is like, I didn't want to text Adam for like the hundredth time, like, what's your address? So I just put in a location that I know is near him. <laughs> it's a restaurant. It just so happens there's that there's more than one of those. So I pulled up to an entire... I didn't know it was a chain, man. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. But you do know what town he lives in. I do, yes. And the yeah. destination... So that should have... That should have... Yeah, some alarms should have gone off in my head. Yeah, that should have rang, rang your bell. Maybe a little... And you also grew... Like, you spend a fair amount of time in... Super familiar. Yeah, familiar with the town. In Orange County. So when you're getting off the freeway and going to, like... Yeah, I went to college there. <laughs> Huntington Beach. You know that this is yes. not on the way to Adam. Yeah. And by the way, so... Yeah. But hang on. But, but also... <laughs> Once you get to the restaurant in Huntington, mm-hmm. or even in mm-hmm. where he lives, <laughs> you're gonna have to uh-huh. text him for the address anyway. Well, <laughs> then no, then things start to trigger. Then he was thinking he was gonna vibe vibe it out. Yeah. Yeah. Then I vibe it out. I sess it out, and I vibe. You thought you'd see some landmarks? For, uh, for sure, I would have just sent you the yeah. uh, the address like really quickly, just without even yeah. thinking twice. I would have just yeah. blasted it over to you. Also, but. just scroll yeah. up in the text chain. It's there. I tried. I tried that. Trust uh, me. And I scrolled for a while. And are you? What? Is, what? Where to? Where to go? He you delete your text chains. Are you one of those? Those guys. Well, I lose my phones. They get wet. Well, he's in, in embarrassed of all the hot sexual texts me and Blake yeah, is, right. uh, throw at each other. I didn't want to embarrass s- for himself to like go back and relive it. Well, he didn't want his girl to see all these hot sexual exactly. right. texts. Oh, right, she was watching. It was yeah. like on the dash a, or something. It's yeah, connected via Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. Right, all the, right, all right. Those you don't know it's gonna pop up. Purple horny uh, emojis. A lot of squirt yeah. emojis. Like, who are you texting? Yeah, who are, are they pics? Texting? Pics wet, just emojis. Juicy pics. vagina. <laughs> we got to get that on the fucking soundboard. Uh, so when I when I uh, asked you to do the Bad Ideas episode, um, that show I did for Quibi, and I asked you to do the car racing, uh, that you, yes. were, you were probably the worst person that I could have asked uh, to do the car racing. It was a demolition well, derby. Admittedly, it was probably the most dangerous thing that I did, uh, and me and Durs um, swam with our dicks out in the Amazon River. So, well, yeah. I mean, hey, I don't know, Adam. Yeah. We drove pretty dang close to some freaking cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Yeah, that's true. We did d- drive pretty dang close to some freaking cliffs. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. That would freak me out, the cliff thing. The thing is, is I don't know how to drive a, sh- a stick shift, but I do enjoy racing. I, I find that very fun. Do any yeah. of you guys know how to drive a stick shift? Can we just talk about man shit here for a second? Okay. Oh. Spin off women, pod, dude, how what? To do that. I know some women who Spin can freaking pod. whip a stick. Okay, that's a little... Let me, let me rephrase that. Can we just talk... Okay, you're right. I'm wrong. I will save that for later. No, no, no. I'm saving it for later. I think you d- no double down. Yeah, come on, Tim I'm, double, Allen. I'm a double come down on. kind of a guy. I float come through. On. It's a it's a take back. Save it. I float through. <laughs> Kyle the tool man. I do I do not know how to drive stick, and I will probably never learn unless there's like a job. I I had to learn when me and Durs uh, we did a thing for the Bad Ideas show where we took a ice cream truck, which essentially was just a truck that we put I- coolers of ice cream in the back of the truck yeah. uh, and drove it on the side of this cliff is one of the world's most dangerous roads in Peru. It was pretty sa- insane in certain parts where it's one lane, it's like gravel and mud and there's like a, a sheer cliff on the, along the side of it. And I learned how to drive a stick shift in this giant big ass truck like the day before in the parking lot of the hotel that we were staying in. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, w- you know, wasn't very and good at it. Wasn't very successful, if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The car left. was in the parking brake on the whole time. Yeah, I left a parking brake on the entire time. And we're like, why is it stink oh like this? God. I don't know. Oh, Peruvian cars. We don't know how they up. work. It just reeked. We just totally fucked this guy's car up. And then we gave him like four hundred dollars, and he's like, "Thank you. This will buy me a new car. <laughs> yeah. This this truck sucked." 
Chris will buy all the cars. Both you and Blake know how to drive motorcycles, which is kind of, that's the same idea as a stick. You're driving a clutch. Yeah. Clutch car. So you kind of got the idea there. I would love to jump in on the motorcycle thing. Yeah, let's do Are it. Are you trying to get a motorcycle? Well, I'm, I know I'm, I, I have something else because I, I know you, I mean, go, uh, go ahead, go Anders. Stick. Go stick. No, stick but is like, I just was giving them credit. I was giving them credit because they know the clutch, at least the clutch mentality, Thank which you, is sir. really what it's about, yeah, how, how right. an, uh, an engine operates. That's the, what my Absolutely. father made me learn on, and that's why I call it man shit. Mm-hmm. What, and that's, what is that, man shit, Kyle? Yeah, is that huh. what you're... That's why I call it man shit, because of my father, because he said you must learn on a stick. And I said, okay, daddy. Hey, I don't disagree wow. with that. <laughs> daddy, I'll never. <laughs> yes. Well, why don't you cry about it? But yeah, uh, saddle motorcycles. Bags. So like, what was it, season three or four that you guys got motorcycles? Mm -hmm. Well, B Blake got, had uh, his first, and then I bought it. I bought yeah. mine uh, maybe a year or so after Blake um, got his. And what? Who? What kind of make and models I mean, are we I talking? I got a Harley right. I got a Harley right out the gate. It was it was crazy. It was my first motorcycle. It was a terrible decision. Uh, oh. Yeah, I got a Triumph nine nine hundred. Uh, it was it was a souped up bad bitch, and I I really thought it was fucking cool. But I live, my house was in the Hollywood Hills, so right. it's it, 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 you, I couldn't learn. I couldn't get in and out of my neighborhood. Right. As soon as I, if I was able to like roll my way down this cliff, then I could actually drive it on the flatlands pretty easily. Like that, that I could do. But I, I, I've dropped it so many times, and every time you drop a motorcycle, oh, you just, it's a goddamn thousand dollars of bullshit yeah. that you gotta fix because the right. clutch will pop off, and you know all the shit will break. That that, that they're like. Mm, you don't know how to fix it because you're a fucking idiot because you don't know as kyle would say man, man shit. Yeah. and sorry. uh sorry yeah, that. I, i'm saving and, it but and yeah. so i so i ended up I, I i don't have it anymore but i you don't have it you got rid of it i got rid of it yeah i sold it for like nothing for like zero dollars Okay. All right. That was going to be my question is what y'all doing with it and can I get it? So I remember one of the first times I dropped it, I I'm was going down the side of the cliff uh, in my in my neighborhood. You have to take like a hairpin turn to get out of the neighborhood. Yeah. Gnarly, gnarly downhill hairpins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of lost control of the bike. It wasn't, there was nothing there. There was nothing in front of me. And there was guys working construction on this house right here. And I like... I'm going to just drive into this bush. So I just put the bike down real quick, <laughs> you know, like an idiot. And I'm just like fall and I like skid down the hill a little bit yeah. and I get up and I'm so embarrassed that I just dropped my expensive ass motorcycle just on the ground. It's going to be another fucking thousand dollars that I got to pay for this thing to get fixed. By the way, I'm a half block away from my home. I didn't get out of the neighborhood and I was so embarrassed that all these guys saw and they're like, oh shit, are you okay? And I look into the bush and go, Fucking squirrels! <laughs> yeah, like, oh man, yeah, as, I've been oh, there, brother. That's amazing. Yeah, like, as if as if a squirrel came out, and I'm such a good guy that I don't want to hit a squirrel, so I throw my motorcycle to the ground. Yeah, just. Well, the coolest thing, the only cool thing about uh, falling off your motorcycle is that as soon as it happens, as soon as you drop your bike, you instantly get this embarrassment strength where you can just lift. <laughs> A yeah, thousand yeah. pounds, no problem. Like, you just lift your bike up, and these things are heavy as fuck, but you're so right. embarrassed. And you're just like, I'm cool. I'm cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> on the side oh, of good. a cliff. It's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's like an 800 pound motorcycle, and I'm like, yeah! <laughs> no problem. <laughs> just no problem. You get home, your back just seizes up. It's like, God <laughs> damn. That was the most fun when you guys had those motorcycles, and you'd come into the writer's room and talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how terrifying it was. I, yeah, I'm and it's just like, why do you have these things? I have three of the best rides of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Up and it, down. How many times did you ride it? Blake? About three to four times. Seriously? Remember that like one time I drove to Adam, set? Like a dozen? I remember when you drove it to set. Yeah, I probably took it out about a dozen times, but I crashed five times yeah. like it was almost a 50 percent crash rate for me oh uh, getting in and out of my neighborhood and finally i <laughs> it was the last time i did it uh i it, i was shooting the movie why him and 
and I was in a scene with uh, Franco and Brian Cranston, and we're st are standing around this table and we're talking. And all of a sudden, my leg seized up, and and I made this like face. I was like, Ugh! because it was like the most pain that I that I've experienced. And like a Charlie horse. Sensation? Yeah, it felt just like my yeah, just like seized like the up. Muscles it, were like yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's like something was like grabbing me, like a python had wrapped around my leg and just was squeezing the, the shit out of me. That's and Franco. I, and <laughs> that, was, that was Franco's <laughs> python. You know he's got a hog. And uh, hog. and then Brian Cranston goes. I'm sorry. That's either either you're in a lot of pain, or that's the most insane character choice I've ever seen in my, <laughs> in my life. As if my character is just making some fucking bizarro face, and I'm like, ah, oh, my fucking leg. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. And I peel up my my pants, and I I I guess I didn't look on the back of my I. Uh, Two days before this, over the weekend, I was driving my motorcycle and same hairpin turn and I'm just going up this time and I have to take this hard left in order to, uh, you know, not drive off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take this hard left and I eat shit once again <laughs> and I'm going to pick up the motorcycle, but it's heavy Squirrel. as fuck. So you really got to throw your body weight into it. And I... Uh, just put my entire leg against the tailpipe, but I was hit by the cement truck, so I can't feel my skin. Right. So like, I can't feel hot and cold. I can only feel pressure. I can't feel if my skin is just boiling off. So you were sizzling and your shit. It was fully sizzling against the the <laughs> oh exhaust God. pipe. It's a fucking squirrel. <laughs> yeah, and so I just seared the shit out of my leg and. Uh, it's on the back of my leg. So I'm like, when I wash my body, I don't like inspect the back of my legs. I just right. sort of like go over it with my fucking loofah. Uh, and yeah, hey, nice. yeah, I treat myself. Yeah, I loofah up. That a boy. Ooh, loofah boy. Kyle, is that, ma is that some man shit, my brother? <laughs> yeah. The loofahs? Loofahs are actually full of bacteria. I would not suggest oh, them. They okay. sit there and they Sorry. collect so much. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nuacek. <laughs> well, I rub my open I rub my open wounds with them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I would yeah, not so, suggest that. So anyway, so then I go back and I'm I'm shooting the, this scene and they were like, uh, well, you look absolutely insane. I peel my my uh, pants up and it's purple and blue and green it's the yeah. most magnificent looking mm. wound you've ever seen and it's yeah. a it's a beautiful piece of artwork uh Kinda and then like they were like you what are you doing you're shooting a movie you shouldn't be driving a motorcycle also you obviously don't know how to drive a motorcycle <laughs> so don't, don't no, you drive. don't understand a fucking squirrel <laughs> yeah so, so then i was for the rest of life. after that i was like well what the fuck am i doing i'm like i want to be an actor and do movies and shit. I'm not trying to just like break my fucking neck driving a motorcycle when I truly don't even know how to drive a motorcycle. And then I can't do sh the shit that I'm actually like to do. Yeah. Everybody in you know? LA knows at least two people that have died on motorcycles. LA is a terrible place. It's to like have automatic. A yeah. It's just the traffic is so terrible. Because the lifestyle is like the traffic here is so garbage that you're like, ooh, motorcycle. I'll just skirt between lanes and like everybody on a motorcycle does it. And then everyone dies. Yeah, it's... it's a That's so freaky when I see people going in between that stuff. I just am like, what uh, is happening? It's not legal in other states. When I first moved here, I was like, these guys are wiling the fuck out. They don't yeah. give a shit. Split like they, But it's truly, it's a legal thing that you can do here. Yeah, it's weird because I don't think I've ever really seen in California. I don't think I've ever seen a, a motorcycle taking up the space of a car. You know what I mean? Like just being yeah. like, they always exactly. split down the. I'm a car. Yeah, and the and the cops do it too. Chips, mm -hmm. they fucking like yeah. stroll through, and I'm like, all right, what's your big ass motorcycle? Fucking rules. Okay, yeah. what's your big ass? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I love making room for those guys though, because I'm like, you're not gonna die on my car. The you're, bitch you're gonna fell die somewhere off. up there. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch fell off. Can you imagine if somebody was splitting lanes and they just hit your rear view and you're just like, whoa, and then you see them spill? Mm -mm. Isn't that like a classic move? If like they fucking hate you, they like have a holster with a hammer on the yeah, fucking they, motorcycle and they pull it out and just hammer off your rear view. I mean, I feel like that's kind of an urban legend, but they for sure. <laughs> there's some dickheads. There's some dickheads. I mean, I'm sure that has been done. Yeah. 
I don't I don't know if that's the go to move, but yeah, for I, sure. For some I real, do it. I'd do that. What's up? I'd do What's it. up? Yeah, <laughs> I bet you would. I'd that's it. what I would have. I would have that. I'd have freaking missiles on the side. <laughs> in in seventh or eighth grade, we had this like cool ass gym teacher. No, he wasn't even a gym teacher. He was a science teacher, and he was like the teacher all the girls had a crush on, and oh. he had like a carabiner k- keychain. <laughs> that like made him seem like young and hip active and uh he told this story about a friend of his and he's like i'll never forget it for the rest of my life he's like i got a buddy coolest guy you ever met got himself a ninja plowed right into a like a bulkhead on lakeshore drive he's dead and i was like not getting a motorcycle mr uh, mccollum doesn't want me to get it he's got so a carabiner you- I'm not getting a motorcycle. You put that together, a ninja. In my little kid brain, I would have been like, he got himself a ninja? He owns and then an assassin? <laughs> well, no. Ninjas were like the hot motorcycle at the time. Yeah, it was sure. what Vanilla mm-hmm. Ice had into the extreme. Or not the extreme oh, uh, yeah. Was cool, it? cool as ice. Cool, cool as ice, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, so we all knew what a ninja was. Zipping around construction sites. It was all about ninjas and sidekicks. If you had the sidekick Jeep. Suzuki. Hello. Yeah. Wind is a factor. Got himself a ninja. Plowed right into the... (laughs) I was like an off-ramp or something like that. Mm. Stuck with me. All right. Yeah, I remember that was the story of motorcycles. It's not if you're going to have to lay it down. It's when you're going to have to lay it down. And it's like... Which is why they're so fucking cool. Yeah, and it's like, so every time you get on it, it's a a death wish, man. Like, you're just like, well... Yeah, lived around. I always yeah. figured. Ride I always figured live. if I was going like on a motorcycle and I had to lay it down, I would slide under but a semi. I would, uh, no, I would lay it down and then get on top of it and surf. Oh, you it. would oh, surf yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I always figured yeah. that's what I would end up doing because I'm so agile and yeah. nimble and. Bro. You yeah, know, you like <laughs> you're a ninja. You yeah. really are. Uh, Who's the ninja now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang, you, think I, I, you guys really think I could do that, right? Is that, yeah, absolutely. You, is I a, mean, shit, you taught yourself to surf. Killed me much harder. Surf on a sideways motorcycle going 55 miles an hour on asphalt. That's true. Yeah, right. That's exactly my thought. Guys, I, I, I was just remembering. I didn't even tell you that last week I had like one of the uh, uh, an all-time life day. I had an all-time life day. I got to eat what? dinner. I got to eat dinner lasagna with none other than U2's The Edge. Um, what? Yes. Bury the headline? Yeah. I with co- The Edge himself? Yes, dude. I w- because, you know, I live on the same block as none other than uh, Tiba Jefferson. He's uh, the photographer of this podcast and Game Over Man and uh-huh. Thrasher yeah. and all that. A and living right? living legend. Living yes, legend. Yes. Love the guy. I could do a whole pot on him. Oh, my God. I love him. My God. He's so cute. We love him. Yes. Atiba. But somehow he somehow he has connections with The Edge from U2. He's, he's a huge U2 does. fan. He is. Yes. He is. And yeah, he's, that's his band. He spreads the gospel. But just the fact that he had his greatest hero ever over to eat. His homemade lasagna is... Oh, at the house. At Atiba's house. Not at like Dan Tana's or something. No, oh, we were wow, in his backyard awesome. with the edge eating l- his mom's <laughs> homemade lasagna, dude. It was wow. insane. It was absolutely no. insane. Were you like, uh, have, you, have you found what you're looking for? Or have you still not found <laughs> what you're looking for? I dropped so many references. Yeah, I... Atiba kicked me out. No, it was <laughs> it was crazy, dude. It was absolutely oh. insane. And he was the absolute nicest dude. Him oh. and his wife. Yeah. Like just the yeah. super humble, super awesome. And I'm saying as soon as this Covito stuff is over, we're getting backstage passes, brother. Let's go. Oh baby. I wanna get out there when he does numb. Come oh my on. gosh. How crazy is that, dude? That like you two is what? Like third biggest rock band of all time maybe yeah like beatles rolling stones u2 what who else who yeah else? they're up there dude just and it's quick and it's crazy because they still haven't found what they're looking for <laughs> it is crazy like they're still looking for but, it but also the edge has the edge has a sound that i don't think people like you instantly recognize when it's the edge but i don't think he gets like the credit that like you know is is due I, I agree well wasn't he in he was in that documentary with jack white right it might get loud and he was talking about all the different uh 
amplifications and all the different patches that he runs through and he's got his own tech that kind of gives right. him a sound that cannot be replicated well that's right. what um, was kind of crazy because like i grew up in like a u2 house like my stepdad and my dad always listened to u2 but i never like super deep dived and like like the album boy is super sick like atiba was playing it that night yeah. but i hadn't really dove into it much and if Upon first listen, and I was getting kind of drunk, like the bass lines kind of sound like a little cure-ish. <laughs> so I'm like, to the edge, I'm like, D so like, were you like influenced by like the cure or something? And then he just kind of was like, no, like, it's, <laughs> it's us, dude. Like we right, created dude. everything. It's like just insane. And he's like, no, they, <laughs> like, we influenced them. Yeah, like the every jam? Everyone you hear is us, <laughs> and really good. <laughs> We're really old. Uh, we've been around forever. I know it doesn't seem like I'm old because I'm always wearing sunglasses and a hat, and uh, and my name is The Edge. Yeah, and my name is The Edge. <laughs> what is his real name? His real name is like... You know, I, I don't... Edger, Ed Kyle Edgerton. Edgerton. Yeah, I, Kyle I, Edgerton. Brothers. I wouldn't know. I don't call him The Edge anymore. I call him The Homie. Oh, the, the friend, the friend. Oh God, the friend. Wow, that's a that's a downgrade in the name. Yeah, yeah. The edge is way cooler than the homie. Yeah, that's a that's a to him. What? <laughs> to you, it's a major upgrade, but to him, that's kind of like. Yeah, what I do don't you think know. he's going to tell me to pause on that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anna just says <laughs> that his name is David Howell Evans. Cool mm -hmm. name. That sounds like a serial killer's name. Allegedly, the edge, the edge's name is David Howell. Yeah, it's, that's a serial killer's name. I understand why he changed it because that is for sure a serial killer <laughs> name. Sorry, we're all it's, reading the chat. Well, now we're now we're all like now we're all just reading. Yeah, uh, edge is over for cool. dinner. Put on a YouTube record. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that uh, means. But I will did. say that I, I do love the song Until the End of the World, I think is what it's called. And I heard it like hella late. And I was like, oh, this must be on like the new album. I got to li listen to it and couldn't find it and had to dig way back in the crates. Um, yeah, they got some hits. Yeah. What's so crazy is like even in that situation, because we're all like drinking wine and taking like shots with <laughs> the edge because he's irish so you gotta do it let's go but right. it was like what what do you what do you mean you gotta do it dad they, i mean come on dude they make like he's still gonna send it uh, hello um <laughs> no no i mean <laughs> nice. i mean still gonna send uh, it. <laughs> you uh, atiba it's weird that you guys are drinking wine first of all because atiba only just mainlines jägermeister yeah, Jager, but right. you really think you're gonna convince the homie to drink Jägermeister? <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. Convince David Howell Evans? <laughs> yeah, it's not happening, dude. It's, yeah, maybe. The, no, what, I, what sort of booze did you guys drink? We were just doing some Jameson, which I hadn't had in a minute. It's uh, so yeah. delicious. Oof, it's really night lovely. Ender. That's some Irish shit. You, you're, you're hanging with a literal living legend, and you're starting to get tipsy. You start to ask the dumbest. I'm, like, asking about, like, the Batman and Robin soundtrack song. He's like, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, I remember. Yes, kiss me, kill me. He's like, yeah, mate, have another shot and fucking shut up. <laughs> yeah. So you were you were you were fanning out to him in a major way. Oh, and I, the more drunk you got, the more you're like, "Tell me about this." It was, oh my goodness! It was just five of us. It was mm -hmm. Edge, his wife Morley, uh, Atiba, and Akko. But Akko like blacked out, so he like he pe he pieced out kind of quick. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't count. You guys didn't. You when he woke up, were you like, dude? Bono came over, <laughs> yeah. and then the blonde guy with glasses showed up yeah. and just drummed for a half hour. Like, no way. Yeah. Yeah, was... what is that? Like, so you're just, like, fanning out, but really, like, what else are you going to talk to him about? It's I mean, like... yeah. Well, that's what's yeah, cool fuck, about this whatever. dude. He's been in the yeah. game for eight million years, and he's a true fan of all, like, of rock. Like, he's an encyclopedia. All He, he yeah. lives music, so you just talk yeah. music the whole time. It was, it was a fucking dream. I, yeah, that's, that's cool. radical. Did he ask to touch your hair? Uh, no, well, COVID, so no, no touching. Oh, yeah, because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Social sure. distance party. But I could tell he was like, let's he take a goofy to. picture, like lay it over my head, and then, like, so it looks like I have it. <laughs> they call me the hair. <laughs> just That'd chill. Sight. Well, how did Atiba get him over? Was just like, yo, do you want to come over and eat lasagna? Well, I I think they had uh, kind of like 
linked up in Japan a while back, uh, like after a show, and they were at a bar together. Yeah, you got to link up in Japan. And then somehow I think uh, the Edge's wife was following Atiba on Instagram, and he Atiba posted a picture of his mom's lasagna, which he makes, which is super bomb. And mm -hmm. uh, the Edge's wife was like, can we get some of that? And it was like, yeah, let's link up. Let's set up a That's dinner. That's how these so, things always work, though. It's like there's always a link up in Japan, then a picture <laughs> of a it. mom's lasagna, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they can I get mm -hmm. some of that? Yeah. Yep. And I think that's how The Godfather 2, they weren't going to do a sequel, but right? I think Coppola had a lasagna. I can't remember exactly, but Japan was in there, too. I, I do recall. I recall something about lasagna. Everything happens. Yeah, it was, it was like lasagna... So were you guys, you guys were listening to you 2 while the edge was over? Well, it's, I, as the night goes on and you get more bold, like, Atiba's like, oh, I'm going to play you my U2 set. But it was so cool because you could tell this dude. That's pretty tight when you have someone who goes, I'm going to play you what has made me who I am based on you. It's it, like an honor. Oh, man. And, and I think in that context, the edge must have been like, I'll tolerate it. Well, what was you know? saying? <laughs> like, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, but what's it like? I mean, okay, uh, do you remember it or were you at the ACO level or, or like what was his response? Was he like, the honor is accepted or was he like, this is going on a little too long? No, that's, <laughs> no, dude. No, no. Like, I heard him. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's just the hits. It's just the biggest songs like, that he has to play yeah, every no, goddamn I, day. I know. <laughs> Can we listen to the cure? <laughs> nothing from the yeah, nothing from the back of the crates, just like all the front runners. Like these maybe. Yeah, he's like, like, yeah, it's just with or without you. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I just heard this on the radio over here, but okay, yeah, we can have you like have you ever <laughs> oh heard God. it's like I love this deep cut. It's called Beautiful Day. Whoa, whoa, it's this <laughs> it's the sweetest thing. Yo, <laughs> the joint from the reality bite soundtrack. I remember that being like the song that touched my soul for the first time. I was like, this shit is deep. Dude, I Whatever it was, can't remember. U2 is so sick. U2 to me is like, soul is like college music. It's like the type of shit, because it, it gets you in your feels mm -hmm. more. And I feel like when you're like 18, 19 years old and you're just trying to figure yourself out, mm -hmm. that's when you get all up in your yeah. feels. I feel like I was more in my feels then than than since ever since yeah and that that to me it makes me think of uh of some occ orange coast community college days uh listening to a, a lot of um basically with or without you they're most well, popular <laughs> well what's super dope is <laughs> you like gotta, you gotta throw in all i want is you from the reality bite soundtrack because yes. that shit Go. Well, what's dope about even like early U2, that shit was like revolution rock. Like they were they were political. Yes. They were trying to make a change. Like you put that shit on now, you better be ready to change the fucking world, dude. Whatever. I was just talking about cuz I listen to a lot of Rage Against the Machine. I just fucking love them. Mm -hmm. And uh Speaking whatever of happened to like political rock music or any type of it's it, besides like the YG fuck Donald Trump song. There's no, there's like no well, political I mean, Kendrick, rock yeah, music. Ken, Kendrick, there's yeah. no rock music, period, really. Right. That's true. Kendrick so, has Kendrick a song is... featuring you two, which we listened to with The Edge. He was super stoked on that song. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Kendrick is elevated. Who else is, makes noise? Well, I mean, Rage was just about to do Coachella. So I feel like yeah. it was. It was it was leaning that way. I know, but I mean, yeah, and I fucking love Rage Against the Machine, but they're like I th I think I saw like a post the other day of uh, it was like a clip of Rage Against the Machine that someone had posted, and then they were like, "Oh, since when did they get so political?" <laughs> and you're well, like, uh, and the, the song is like twenty years old, and you're right. like, "What? What? Oh, Evil <laughs> Empire? Come on." Yeah, I think I saw that. It was like, what did, what were you listening to? What, what songs were you listening yeah. to? And did you just have them turned off or what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never turned them on before. I actually never listened to yeah. them. I just like love the t-shirts at Hot Topic. I, I, I just sick. like that album cover of the dude on fire. Yeah, that was fucking sick. 
I also really liked when he like sat on the speakers like at the MTV like music awards. Like I thought that was a sick move. It's like, that yeah, was, well, oh, yeah, that was dope. Yeah, when he like climbed up high and like wouldn't come down. Yeah. That was so yeah. tight. The MTV yeah. yeah, dude. Protest, baby. Everyone didn't know what was going on. That shit was rock and roll back then. The MTV Music Awards used to be a fucking stop everything you're doing and watch that shit. 100%. We all know the one moment that changed everything. What? When, Our, Sting, <laughs> when Sting came out of the floor for Every, Puff Daddy yeah. doing the B.I.G. With Faith, with Faith Evans and shit. Every breath you take. That was a game changer. Wait, but wasn't this also a moment? Fucking Snoop Dogg. But anyways, coming up out the wheelchair, murder was the case. What? Oh, Snoop getting out of the wheelchair. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was so good. I thought he got shot when he came, when he came on stage in the wheelchair. I was like, wait, what? Did Tabitha Soren not give me the fucking news about this? <laughs> Kurt Loder, where you at? And then he was walking and I was like, man, the theatrics. Dude, he stood up. That was crazy. And he showed up to the red carpet with like his hair straightened, like all like relaxed. Yep. Yes. And he's just like, I'm just yes. feeling way lovely this evening. And I was like, oh my gosh, Snoop Dogg is the coolest guy ever of Legend. all time. I feel like the more recent cool moment from the Music Awards was when, <laughs> was it Borat who dropped down on Eminem and Eminem and put his butt on Eminem's face? And Eminem was like, no, no, not cool. <laughs> It might have been. There might have been a... Yeah. He was in on that. He was like... Ugh. Yeah, my bum is on... It wasn't Tom Green? Damn. No, they're oh. homies, right? Tom Legend. I don't know. Mate. I just remember him not being cool with it. Like he, it, Maybe he was acting, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> he was acting. Yeah. You, well, he's a great actor. He's a great actor. You're right. I was fooled. I was fooled. I feel like if you just... Maybe you should have lasagna with M&M or something. I don't know. I feel like this could go down. I'll have mom spaghetti over lasagna. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we're talking. Yeah. I'll eat a little mom spaghetti. So that's the trick to get to, to get like your favorite rock stars over to your house is just constantly be posting photos of uh What's your mom's what's your mom's best recipe? <laughs> My mom fucking sucks <laughs> at cooking shit. Stop. So like pretzel I love sticks. her. I what love her. Sticks, That's right? weird that you're saying that about your mom. <laughs> it's it's a fact. It's a fact. Some moms can't cook. No, it's factual. It's yeah. I don't have like there's no outstanding dish that my mom made. No, my mom no? my mom it was and she'll even she'll agree to this. She's not a good cook. She wasn't yeah. a chef. She makes her one thing that she does make is those pretzel sticks, which are and just oh my God. pretzels yes, dipped in chocolate. You. Those are so good. But it's you a can't have yeah, that's a dessert. You're not inviting over. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I, you can't have Anthony Kiedis over to eat pretzel sticks. Yeah, I'm not. Dave Grohl's uh, not rolling through to to have a night of pretzel sticks. I kind of think you could get <laughs> get him over there with that. I kind of think you could. Wait, who would you guys? What? Okay, ready? Who would you guys want to have over for dinner? And what dish of your mother's would you serve mm. to be like, this is my best foot forward? Mm. Oh, Jesus. This is my mom is not a great cook either. You can't say that. You can't say that. Oh, look at you. How'd you just body? You just bodied Adam. And I, <laughs> you can't. You absolutely can. Well, no, but I've had I've had Adam's mom's food. I actually Two. I actually fundamentally disagree with him. Well, you've only so, had her Christmas snacks. I can't wait for your take backs and apologies. <laughs> what what it, what specifically what specifically do you like that my mother cooks? I you, love her sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, she cooks it with love. she makes things with love. It's it's not like she's just you know. I think what it was about your mom's cooking. Now that I think about it, is like she was just down to cook whenever. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it was. It's not that it's overly sure. good. It's like no matter what, we would come home at like you know in high school, come home at like midnight or you know one o'clock, and my mom would wake up and be like, "You guys want some steaks?" Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And she would straight up cook us steaks, steak and eggs at like 1 a.m. And meanwhile, we're just high as fucking kites and, you know, drunk as fuck. And she mm -hmm. like wouldn't either wouldn't acknowledge that or just pr act like she didn't know. Or maybe she didn't know. I have no idea. Yeah. She was just like, I'm going to keep you guys here until you get in a car and drive. I think home. she was just stoked that we were, you know, we were home and uh, and, and she could. So Feed do, the boys. Okay, all right. So so, so if, if your mom made a steak, who would you want to kick it with? Who would you want to have over at your house for your mom's steaks? 
Uh, maybe the, you, you know, I mean, you know me. It's the entire original cast, not the original. Uh, the the Tom, I'm frozen, Mark, and uh, Travis. A oh. Blink One Eighty Two fame. I'm trying to have a cast. punk rock Christmas. I was the like, cast. "What is he talking about?" Cast Tom. <laughs> Tom he meant band. I meant band. I'm an okay. actor. My guy's music. My guy's Broadway. He's Broadway or bust. Blink. I'm a Broadway boy. Is Travis Barker? Is Travis Barker not in that? No, I said trap. I want that uh, uh, yeah. lineup, if you will. Of uh, there is that not who it is anymore, or was it before that? I don't. No, it still is. It still is Travis Barker. Okay. okay. Mark, okay. Mark, Tom, and Travis show. That's what I want over at my house. Nice. Yeah, that would be fucking dope. Yeah, yeah that's because uh, well, yeah. you know those guys. I've gotten to know um, Mark pretty well, and he's just a fucking great guy. And I'm just like, you know that those guys are silly as fuck. Very funny music video. Yeah, the, the, like, those guys are just silly. It it wouldn't it wouldn't be too precious. Taking the piss out of boy bands. You know, you know, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to be too precious with it. Well, I'm. You would be on edge. You'd be like, and here's your steak, Mister. I know edge, homie on homie. You'd be on homie. Oh, that's true. You'd be on homie, dude. Yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like, I know I'm feeling this. Uh, I miss you. Okay, I got mine. Hey, I got mine. it's Adam's song. I'm, I'm taking apple it. juice and just <laughs> pour it on the <laughs> and the uh, carpet in the hall. <laughs> okay, Blake, what's what's up? I'm doing um my mother's turkey pot pie with Stevie Wonder. Wow! Wow! All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah All right. I mean, Kyle, your turn. <laughs> Kyle, your <laughs> turn. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, yeah. I went back in time because I, I haven't eaten at the at the house in a while, and I don't. I think I think my favorite food that my mom ever made was her meatloaf. Hey. Like, I loved yeah. my mama's meatloaf. Yeah. Okay. It was yeah. so that's straight up. I can see. Fucking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we loaded up with ketchup, and you just throw ketchup. It's the only on way to do it. So you liked ketchup. <laughs> I love that meatloaf. <laughs> Blake, you haven't been throwing that out enough, this one, man. God damn, dude. <laughs> and I don't know, because that took me back, so then I was like, I don't know, maybe I'd ask Exhibit to come over and have some, <laughs> <laughs> some meatloaf. See, that's see, that's funny. That could be a fun story. Wait, no, because you X could talk about Z? Pimp My Ride. You could talk about... Oh, uh, you would, for sure. Yeah, I just have a lot <laughs> yeah, that I would love yeah. to talk about you're, would exhibit over my mama's meatloaf. You're not going to be talking about uh, any of his music. It's just about, like, do you think an aquarium will fit? Well, uh, I'll ask, yeah, I'll, <laughs> right. right. Hey, check out this. Would, uh, would, can you put a pool table in the back seat? Yeah, do you think a hot tub would actually fit... Uh, <laughs> Damn, that's a I'll ask one. him, like, you know, I'll say what was going through your mind when you wrote X Gone Give It To You. Like, what was the meaning behind that? What was He's like, uh... He was like, you know, I was thinking about giving it to him. I'll be like, how you like the meatloaf? <laughs> no, the record label, they kept bothering me for a song. I'm like, fine, X gonna give it to you. And then I was like, wait a and second. That hook. would be some cool insider info. My guess wow. for Dursey, it's, uh, the, it's the Beastie Boys. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. The person I was thinking of was Q-Tip. Mm. Yeah, uh, very close. We, we, would, uh, we would enjoy a pan of my mom's brownies. Okay, there we go. Uh, so you did the dessert when we said that you couldn't do the pretzel sticks. Well, pretzel sticks are like... Uh, sure, okay, let me... Pretzel sticks are covered in chocolate. Well, have you had... Okay, okay, hang on. Time out. Are you... You're shitting on my... Fuck it. Uh, let me... Let me reboot here. No, it's cool. I am just want to make sure we're on the same page here. I mean, I, I, if my mom made turkey pot pie. Have you had Penny Devine's pretzel sticks? <laughs> I, I haven't. Are you asking me? I'm asking you. I, me? You, Durs. Have, have you, you had, had her pretzel up? sticks? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe on the set of War Yeah, I feel like, I feel we like we have. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly we've good. had those. They're pretty um, good. And I'm sure they're great. I guess, okay, fine. Because my mom would just make brownies constantly. It was just like a thing that's in her house. That's super so dope. Lucky I love boy. That. I love that. But I guess I'll have to rock with some of those old school hard shell El Paso tacos. Hey, yo. With like Classics. The, the meat, mm. the, the meat seasoning mm. and just mm. uh, Lowry's. Lowry's. pick Q-tips brain <laughs> with a Q-tip. Dang. Um, that's a great call. Yeah. And just, just talk. I feel like tacos are a really good chatting food as well. I don't know if... Yeah, that's good. Tacos. That's why they're called tacos. Yeah, right. Talk, tacos with durs. Yeah, because you're talking while eating. I'm wondering, 
if what if he passed on like the shell though and he was like i'll just make a plate i think i'd be like get the fuck yeah, out you're done. really and i think it would bother me road. i think i'd be like q-tip it's a taco <laughs> it's not this is mm. not a plate situation yeah it's not a bowl okay you're breaking my heart yeah, here. Get over yourself. Please have a Q-tip. taco. Well, what if he? What if he's like, you know, Q-tip's a little older. Maybe he's adding, you know, throw, thrown on a few extra pounds. Well, what if? What if he has a taco and then for round two he comes back and he's like, for this one I'm just gonna bowl it up. Would you then? Yeah, but so because he had the taco. But right. but here's the thing: when you make those tacos, especially the hard shell, mm-hmm. if you've had three or four and like they're breaking and kind of falling out on the plate. Then you have your like remnants that you clean up, you, you, you scarf on after, right? So you don't have to put a taco shell in the fourth one. You're cool. So if Q-Tip made a couple tacos and then he just started like pounding them with his fist into nachos, would you be like, this fool is a legend? <laughs> if he did that shit to a beat, then we're, we're good. <laughs> if he was just like, okay, uh, let me just... Uh... Now that's a low-end theory. Yeah, that might be... <laughs> Uh, by the way, he did hand me my phone when I got off the airplane like last year coming from New York. That yeah. was your chance. So, That's, so, now, so you've done your Japan meetup. Yeah, you already had the meetup. Now you have to do your mom's tacos. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I left my phone yeah. on my seat and he was like, hey man, is this yours? And I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Well, Instead like, of, uh, is this yours? I worship you. Thank you, sir. Well, my uh, neighbors are Green Day, and I've become uh, buddies with them. And I had actually had a pretty punk rock thing happen the other day where uh, where I was getting stuff out of my car, and my car was parked on the street, and Billy Joe and his wife pull up in, like, their... Uh, like the Dookie Mobile in their Dookie Mobile. No, it's a convertible, uh-huh. and uh, they're like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" But I haven't seen them for a while, and I'm like, "Wait, it wasn't the Dookie Mobile." It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. Why'd you say it was? I'm sorry. I'll save that. It wasn't the Dookie Mobile. No. Why did you even say it was then? Because it's it's called Yes Anding Dog. Yeah, he's Yes Anding not quite. He's but then I was like, "Hey, it's not actually the Dookie Mobile. It's a convertible." But then you mm-hmm. say convertible, Look. now I have to change. I have to go backwards and change a whole fucking story. Hey, so okay, sorry. it's a Listen. convertible. It's, it's not the Dookie. Mobile. All you need to know is he's talking to the lead singer of the cast. Of the of cast. Green Day. Stop. <laughs> the original cast. Of the Green original Day. cast. Now stop. And, uh, <laughs> future American idiots. People. The people. There was a lot. Of, it was like a weekend, and there was a lot of people uh, leaving the, the the beach, and they, they were backed up behind them, and they were honking them and coming around them, and uh, Billy Joe's just trying to wave them through, and his wife jumped up on the. Uh, on her seat, and this is why it's important that it's a convertible, and she stood mm-hmm. up and this she flips important. them all off, and she's like, fuck you, we're talking here, fuck you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, God damn, I love punk rock. I, lo- wow. I love that. I love that you're able to just say, fuck you, and they're like, well, that's part of our thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, we're yeah, fucking I, rock I, and roll. I do have the time to listen to you whine. <laughs> I did. <laughs> wow, that was great. I do have the time. Guys, is there any take backs, apologies, or, or the <laughs> other thing that we say? Is yeah, that, I'll, is yeah. It that time already? <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. I'll jump in, and I'll definitely oh, apologize. Time flies. Okay, he no, because we know what's coming. Well, I'm gonna apologize for saying man <laughs> stuff no. about the car. I'm gonna do a full blown. I don't it's think you had to you apologize alive. for that. Adam's got his take back from next next episode. <laughs> I said I was saving it, so I'm hmm. gonna do it anyways. But I also <laughs> would like to apologize to Durst for jumping down the throat about the brownies because I actually kind of want to taste them brownies one day. So hey, you can go to the grocery yeah. store and buy them. They're called Betty Crocker, baby. Nice. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. All Very right. Nice. Cool. Compliment your mom on the Betty Crocker recipe. <laughs> I would like to apologize uh, to my mother by saying she's a shitty cook. And I shouldn't have said she's shitty. <laughs> I should say that she's just not any good. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Very, nice. Very good. Very good. Nice. You know? Nice, dude. Yep. Very good. And I, w- I want to just compliment all your mothers for, you know, just having food on the table. And, oh. you know, yep. it's not easy. I'm, I'm over here trying to cook stuff. I can Sweetheart, I burn toast. I tell you, it's it's a heck of a time cooking up a meal for these kids out here. So shout out to moms trying out there. Boom. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Take. Uh, I believe the third thing is compliments. 
Just want to compliment Blake on his story <laughs> uh, and being so forthright about how dorky he was with the edge. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and let's see. I guess I apologize to Kyle. I'm sure I said something. <laughs> oh, that was, you were actually <laughs> nice to me today. Yeah. 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 I thought that was pretty good. It was a pretty good uh, light Kyle day. Well, then yeah. I guess if I'm going to take back. <laughs> take, take back, back all apologies to Kyle. Take right. back that apology, you bitch. All, all right. Good. And we will definitely have more. We'll have more uh, next week. Oh, this is important. We'll have. Uh, we should have done that for an hour straight. Ah, goddamn.